Well, I kept looking at this picture and looking at this picture, and I thought, you know, it's kind of a shame not to finish it, so I am going to go ahead and finish it. I figured I might as well make a part two and show you the Photoshop half of fixing up this picture. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. First thing is to right click on the picture, edit in Adobe Photoshop, and let's load it up in there. Um, I haven't really gone through this yet, so um, I may be making some mistakes along the way. I don't know what I'm going to do here for sure or how I'm going to do it. So um, we'll both kind of just do this all together. Uh, the first thing I do is I always make a copy of my background layer and then I'll put a blank layer on top of that to start building all my changes onto it. So I can always reverse out or go back to original if I need to. Um, also, the way my Lightroom and Photoshop is set up, this will save back into Lightroom but as a whole new image. So I'll still have that original unedited image or be able to get back to that original raw unedited image in um, Lightroom if I ever need to. Um, so anyway, first thing I see are there's the upper left and the or upper right and the lower left. The problems with those when I um, straighten this line. Let's double check and make sure that this line is straight. Here's a kind of cool way to do it. You take um, where is it? Uh, the ruler tool, and let's put it right on the horizon right there. Draw it all the way across to right on the horizon there. And now we've got what should be an exact straight and level line. You can see a couple bumps along the line here and there. That means it's not exactly level. So just go to Image, Rotate, and then go to Arbitrary. And it will magically figure out whatever the angle of that line is, put that in there, and rotate your image. So now I know that that horizon now is exactly 100% exactly level. I can never do that in camera. I always have to do it in post. Anyway, maybe, um, um, you know what, for now, let's just leave that because I don't want to, you know, fill all that in. We'll just crop into it anyway. So there we are. We've got that. The first thing, the most obvious thing I need to fix on this is to remove the board that Claire is standing on. So let's go in there. And um, you know what, I think our best bet is going to be to just, um, uh, what's this little bad boy called? Clone stamp tool? Yeah, just clone stamp that thing out. Um, I would try and save this, but the pattern on that board looks different than the pattern on the water. So I'm just going to take, um, take that completely out. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool to put a safe area around the the point shoe so that I don't go into that. Um, so I'll just there go outside and around. Make sure I get the whole board in there because I want to take the whole board out. Double click and that'll close the loop and here I go. So grab this. We'll go way over here to the right. Hit the Alt key and use that as our sample area. And then I'll bring that in here. Um, color's a little bit off, so I'm going to control Z out of that, and let's go, let's try here, see how that looks in there. Um, yeah, I don't like that color either, it's a little darker. Um, let's try right here. Uh, um, you know what, that's going to work. So let me just paint that in. I think we're far enough back that um, nobody's going to see the repeat in the pattern. Um, oh, I, I do see that big dark area there. I will get that. Don't worry. So I'll just grab from here and take that dark area out. That would be a dead giveaway, wouldn't it? All right, so now I'll do the same over on this side. Grab some of that yellow. Let's bring that in here. And painting this out, you know, nice and rough. I'm not going to make this super exact. It doesn't need to be. Okay, I see that pattern repeating there, so let's grab this and just go over part of it. You know, make it look random there. That, 
that randomizes that pretty good. Now <clears throat> I'm going to deselect. So now that foot looks pretty good, but I have to repair the reverse of it. So let's see, I'm on the layer that I did the repair of. Um, and then that, um, so I'm, I'm going to grab the shoe. I'm going to flip the shoe. So that's on this layer. So let's grab that and um, let's just grab the shoe and some extra things around it. And um, copy. Whoops, I X that. So, so Control C is copy. And then Control V will paste it and I'll get a new layer. And that's layer two. So. I'm on layer two. You can see there I'm moving layer two around. I need to move layer two um, on top for now above the layer of the, the fixes that I just made. So there it is. Now I'm going to hit control T which is um, um, transform. That'll give me these handles to grab so I'll just turn it upside down like that. Um, to position this I'm going to make the opacity 50% so it'll look um, see-through just like that. Now what I'm trying to do is line it up perfectly on this side and get that to match right there. And it looks like it does so I think that's good. Um, take the opacity back up to 100%. That looks horrible doesn't it? Don't worry I'm gonna fix it. We're gonna put um, a mask on this layer. So there we go we've got a white mask which means everything on this layer shows. So if I come over here and grab a brush and go to black, I'll be able to block things. Right now I've got white. To get to black I just hit X. There we go. So now I've got um, a black paintbrush. Um, I'm gonna leave it around 18 percent. That's okay because um, I'm gonna be working my way in and I'll, I'll be finessing the edges. Actually let's start with 100 percent and then we'll finesse the edges later. Let's do all the big stuff first. Okay, so we've got that. I've got a 1700 pixel brush right now, so I need much smaller. So I use the left bracket till I get it down to, can you see it there? There, now you can see it. I think that's probably a good size. Well, I know everything right above here, I don't, I, I can black out. So let's just do that and So I'm, I'm looking at what's behind it now. I'm, I'm uncovering it. What I really just need is just kind of the tip of that, that ballet shoe there. There we go. So you kind of blend the edge and um, take that out right there. Um, let's zoom in a little bit and make that really fine. Um, now I'll take that black brush, make it a lot smaller, and just clean up right in there. Oh, see, I don't like that. So I'm going to hit X. Remember X turned it black? Well, X again turns it white. So now I'm blocking that out. I'm also... Oh, that's, that's too bright. No, you know what? I think that's going to work. Let's go a little bit right. No. Nope. X again and go back to black. Okay, I like that. Um, I'm going to go back to layer one, which is my repairs layer, and I'm going to do a clone stamp tool, very, very small, and try and get a little bit more in there. I want this yellow, so let's just clean that up a little bit like that. I think that looks good, and I, there's a whole lot of dark there I don't like, so I'm going to just grab this color up in here and bring that in and okay where's that coming from there we go nope let's go a little darker there we go all right i think we've got a good shoe there let's take a look at that fit on screen oh man you can't even tell look at that awesome fit on screen okay here's let's take there's the board there's the shoe. All right. So I think we're at a good point there. Um, 
going back to layer one, which is the layer I'm going to do all my repairs on. Um, you know what? I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and make a new layer on top because I'm going to start looking at background things um, and fixing those now. Um, so there we go. And that's layer three. I pull that to the top. Um, one of the things you probably can't see, but I see, and it really annoys the heck out of me, is how dirty my sensor was this day. It was horrible. Um, okay, I'm holding down the space bar, and that lets me grab um, the, um, the picture and move it around with a hand. Um, and I can see all these giant, giant, big black things. Uh, I'm holding down the alt so I can zoom out a little bit. Um, okay, I'm going to do all these repairs with the um, spot healing brush, about as small as I can get it. Um, but I don't like any of those spots. What I do is I start on one side and I just start working my way across. Look, there's dirt. You know what? I don't think these are dirt. What are they? Little? They're like lines. They're. Those aren't birds flying, are they? Is that dirt on the... Is that sensor dust? It doesn't look like normal sensor dust. That is weird. Leave me a, a comment below if you have any idea what I'm... What, what these long, thin black lines are. That's funky. Um, I'm not going to make you suffer through me doing all this, so I will just do all this cleanup, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, here we are. I've gone through and I've cleaned up all those little spots on the sensor and all that. Um, you know, I'm looking at it. By and large, uh, it's pretty good. There's um, a couple of annoying things, I think. Um, when I first started looking at this, I liked the birds flying in the background. Now I find them as, as a distraction. This black splotch there, that's just yuck, yuck, yuck. I am just going to take that out with the spot healing brush. Spot healing brush. Go away, little bird. There he goes. Bye bye. Okay, there's a bird right here. I like him sitting in profile. I'm going to leave him just because that's a cool, cool little hidden thing, I think, in the picture. This one that we're looking at is butt. I'm taking out. Goodbye. Um, let's see. So there are some more um, birds over here. Um, you know, there's not much I can do with that. Um, I'm going to take these off. I don't like things right at the edge. Um, I either like them in or out. Um, so I'm going to just do, what is that? What's that? Clone stamp tool. So I'm picking that straight line right there. I'm just moving that straight line to right here where it continues. And I'm just going to pop them out just like that. Um, that bird's okay. Uh, I don't like that bird. Goodbye. There you go. Um, I think that's good enough. Um, let's look at that again. I think that's pretty much all cleaned up. Um, these black spots here, the little rocks, I kind of like those. That's a random thing coming in, and I really do like this sun glow down here. So um, I'm going to say pretty much the editing is done on that. Um, so I hit the F3 key, I've got an action, a shortcut assigned to F3 that merges all my layers and gives me uh, one clean layer. From there, the next thing I do, I think I've talked about this in other videos, is I go down to Nick Collection and I throw Define in and just take out all the noise. When you've got this biggest sky, you don't want any noise at all. You want that to be a nice, clean, just beautiful color an even color. Um, so that should help with that. Um, come on. And then we're going to go into Color Effects Pro and just play around a little bit there. Um, probably going to add a little bit of um, sharpening. Probably add a little bit of a spotlight effect. Um, take a look at contrast. Take a look at color. I'll probably mess with color a lot more in this one than I did in the last one. So let's see. What comes up first? What are we going to see? Um, 
Sorry. I thought I had a fast computer. I guess I don't. Oh, vignette. That was the last thing I used. I'm not going to use vignette on this. So let's, I think first thing, let's just, let's do the light and dark and center, which is sort of a vignette, but it's um, a little bit more um, customizable a one. I'm going to place the center right on Clara, since she really is the focus. The sun is really a background to her. So I place the center there. Um, I've got the shape vertical, so it's going to stay with her. Let's bring that up till I see. See, it washes it out. So come back down to where I get a good color. I like that. Now let's bring up the border. This would be the sort of the vignette. Um, but the vignette's centered on Clara rather than on the center of the picture. I, that, that looks pretty good. I think we're doing good there. Um, so let's see. Without. No. Without with. See Clara pops just a little bit more there. Now I'm going to add a second filter, definitely adding a detail extractor. The stock detail extractor on um, color effects just is to my eye extremely overpowering. Um, so I just I bring that down to like you know four, five, six, seven. I like it around in there. I like to see just a hint of it um, but it, it fucks with the, the contrast too much for me. Um, I, I build the contrast that I want with light and dark and center and pro contrast and then detail extractor just screws up the contrast so bad and the blacks and stuff so bad I don't like it so I'll just use it where are we at we're at eight okay so let's see it without with just tightens it up a little bit um, and it's a little bit too much it's eight we're gonna take it down to six that's good enough I think that that'll work. Alright, next I'm going to play with Brilliance and Warmth. This is one of my favorites, especially if I'm not quite sure. Something like this, you can go blue, you can go yellow, you can go warm, you can go cool. Um, and this can go either way, you know, and different parts of it could go different ways. Maybe that's what I might do. I might turn this into two pictures and more, make this all more gold and make this all more blue. That might be kind of interesting. Um, but for now, I'm just going to play, and let's let's see what it looks like when we go cooler. Where does our blues go? Come on, show me something. Eh, it looks pathetic and anemic, doesn't it? Let's add some there. Ooh, look at that. That's a little bit more yellows. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, now I'm going to bring up the, the saturation a little bit. This is where the colors just... Bingo, look at that. That's that's exactly where I want to be. Um, look at those striations and look at that in the sky. This this one's turning out really good. I'm really happy with this. Okay, so let's go to Pro Contrast. Um, typically, I don't mess with correct color cast. Um, but when I'm really playing with color like this, sometimes it's fun to just do just to see what it does. Um, doesn't mean I have to keep it. Um, I think the color chroma is too much there. So, actually, maybe just a hint more. Yeah, look at that. Just a little bit more um, saturation. That looks pretty good. Let's see what the... Yeah, these are... Oh, that just kills that, doesn't it? It just... Let's see, maybe bring it down a little bit. I'm liking what that's doing to the clouds back here. It really pulled the clouds out a little bit. Dynamic contrast I do last. That I I don't even know what it means or what it does, but I do like it. I'm liking that a lot. Alright, so let's see. Here's turning off light and dark and center. See, she just disappears. She looks burnt in that. She needs to be a little brighter. and That makes her pop a little bit more. Detail extractor is going to be real subtle, especially on YouTube, with its, what, 300 million, whatever, stream rate. Um, brilliance and warmth. This is where we added that gold. I'm probably going to back that off just a teeny bit now. I always do that. I go to where I like it, then I come back in and I bring it back down a little bit, because... Usually where I like it is just a little too much. Um, 
and then the contrast it just just gives us a little bit more light versus dark um, I think I think that works really really well so there's there's where we were before Nick which wasn't a bad picture at all really I mean I'd take it I think that was a great picture um, but we put this on it and that that's you know it's what Disney calls plussing it's it's that final little bit that little kiss that little mwah, that just pops it over the edge uh, again like I said there's there's the final let's see we went from that to that that to that that to that um, she's got great separation now between her and the background I think um, let's see what was what was this shot at it was um, 35 millimeter at f16 so pretty decent depth of field ISO 64 one two hundredth of a second so that was probably pushing no this one does high speed sync so, so that wouldn't have been pushing the, the flash but um, you know anytime you're doing ballerinas you gotta be 200 and above you don't want to blur their movements at all um, Clara was doing a pose that she could hold fairly well but even still you want crispness you want those you want those fingers to be well defined like they are there so anyway um, okay so my final trick is I hit the opacity on this and I usually bring it down just a teeny bit because like I said I'm a little bit over the top usually so 75 percent ish that's usually where I'm at um, bring in the crop oh, I was doing a one-to-one -one square before just go back to open crop and let's see where we I think think that looks good on the top and the left um, see I need her I want her whole reflection in the right let's yeah I like yeah that I think looks pretty good um, all right let's look at that and see how that looks I think we've got a nice one. All right, so let's save that. And that goes back into Lightroom. And like I said, it'll be a, a new image there. See there, here's where we started. Here's where we are coming back out of um, Facebook. And you know what, I think that's a good one. I'm not going to make any more changes to that, I don't think. Um, that one really really happy with that um, so Sabra thank you very much for making me get off my butt and do some work um, I found a new picture I didn't know I had um, if anyone has any questions or anything about this please let me know I will read any questions and comments um, oh look the human light stand um, you know what it is just such a joy to work with these ballerinas they are so much fun um, Clara, just one of my all-time favorites, too. So, Anyway, that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will do my best to answer them. Um, have a great day.